chapter 1. I'm going to refer to a number of different places in Scripture this morning, but we're going to stay in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1. And look with me, if you will, in verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. A, book, a verse that describes the theme of the book here. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now turn with me, if you will, to chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. You find it begins with the same word as chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Does God hate some things? Well, he says he does. And here's one other thing, or a list of things, there's more. But we're going to talk about that this morning. But really what we're going to talk about is a problem that many people have. And uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I've struggled with it myself. Maybe somebody else here has, maybe I'm not the only one. Uh, but the truth is, many people struggle with this, and a lot of people just don't see it as a problem. I want to talk to you this morning about the problem of pride. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you that we have this time together. Thank you for the music we've heard. Thank you for the people who are here. Thank you that we have the freedom to meet here. Thank you that we have a place to meet. And Lord, I just pray that you will meet with us. We claim your promise, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. And Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here today who does not know you as their Savior, that they would trust you as their Savior, and even in this hour. For those who do know you, help us, Lord, to take an honest look at ourselves and see us as you see us. Speak to us, we pray, by your Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Lord teaches us that Human pride separates the heart of man from the Creator. Psalm 100, uh, I'm sorry, Psalm 10, verse 4 says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. The truth of the matter is, human pride separates us from God because we feel sufficient. I've known people. Not too many, but I've known a few people who had been successful enough in life. And let me stop right there and say, I'm not against success. If you work hard and you're successful, then thank God. That's a wonderful thing. Nothing wrong with that. But I've known some successful people who have succeeded on their own to the point that they said, I don't need God. I'll give you an example. Uh, was at home for dinner uh, with some folks and uh, the lady who was the host, hostess, it was her home, and uh, they said that she had, I think it was 53 or 56 million dollars. Is that true? I don't know. That's what they said. And uh, her nephew, before we ate, said, shouldn't we thank God for the food? And she said, why should I thank God? I provided all this. Now, I'm not picking on that lady, but what I'm trying to get across to you is that's the attitude of many people. Why should I thank God I provided all this? What is that? That's pride. That's pride. Jesus said that evil comes from the heart of mankind. In Mark 7, verses 21 22, he gave us a list of sins that originate in the heart. Listen. From, from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Isn't it interesting that pride is listed with all those other things? Things that most people here, if not everybody, will never even think of. Adultery, fornication, murder, sex, wickedness, evil eye. We wouldn't do that. We certainly don't want to be foolish. But included in that list is pride. It's the second from the last item. And it comes from where? The human heart. Paul gave us a description of human pride in Galatians chapter 6, verse 3, where he wrote, For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Huh. 
Have you ever known of anybody? Maybe you haven't. I have. And thought a little bit more of themselves than they had a right to. That's what Paul's saying. If a man think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Same writer, Paul, in 1 Timothy 3 6, is talking about the qualifications for a bishop, which is an interchangeable word in the New Testament with pastor. And he says, if a man desire the office of a bishop, and then he lists the requirements, and among those that the candidate must not be, he says, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation with the devil. Hmm. Could a pastor be lifted up with pride? Well, that's Paul warns against that. The Apostle John writes to young, growing believers in, in the epistle of 1 John. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Notice included in that is the pride of life. The book of Proverbs is a collection of wise sayings assembled by Solomon. I suppose most of them he wrote himself. He may have collected some from other sources. I don't know. But uh, he put together the book of Proverbs. And one of the themes, and there are many themes in the book of Proverbs, and one of the themes in the book of Proverbs is this matter of human pride. Take a look at chapter 6, if you would, Proverbs chapter 6, and um, look at verse 16, Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. Interesting statement made in verse 16. It says, these six things doth the Lord hate. Now, maybe if you've been here before, you've been to other churches, or you've been around Christians very much, you think, but I, I thought God is love. You thought right. It says that in 1 John chapter 4, God is love. Well, I thought God so loved the world. You thought right again. God is very loving. But does God hate something? Well, we know that he does. How do we know? Because he said so. And he says in verse 16, there's six things the Lord hates, and the seventh is an abomination unto him. Now, what is an abomination? Well, that's some people's idea of a nuclear arms control, abomination. But that's really not what it means. <laughs> what it means is it's something that absolutely disgusts you. That's an abomination. So six things God hates. The seventh is an abomination. We'll see what that seventh one is in a moment. But look at what the first one is on the list. Chapter, uh, I'm sorry, verse 17, a proud look. First thing God hates, a proud look. And then included with that, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Those who are defenseless, those who have done no wrong. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. You know what that means? Somebody sits around and thinks up evil. Do you ever wonder about <clears throat> some of the things that go on today or some of the things that are portrayed in entertainment? And you, you ever think, well, how do people come up with such horrible, awful things? Or acts that people commit? Well, they have a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift and running to mischief. Oh, you hear about what's going on? Let's go be part of that. Hmm. A false witness that speaketh lies. Those are the six. What's the seventh that's an abomination? He that soweth discord among brethren. Somebody who comes in and tries to divide brothers against each other. You ever know anybody do that? I have. These are things that God says he hates. Now, go back to chapter 8, verse 13. We read it a while ago. And the Lord says something else about hate here. It says the fear of the Lord is, and this is for you and I to do, to hate, hate evil. <clears throat> you and I are supposed to hate evil. You know, in the book of Job, when it comes, uh, opening chapter, chapter 1, chapter 2, uh, it talks about Job being a man who escheweth evil. Escheweth. 
That's an interesting word. Uh, I doubt that you have chewed anything lately, but then again, maybe you have, you just don't realize it. Well, what does it mean to eschew? Well, if you chew something, you know what that means. You take a bite of something, you chew it up, right? You eschew it. You know what that means? Spit it out. That's what it means. Spit it out. So what is Job? Job's a man who loves God and is chewing evil. He is chewing, he spits out evil, hates it. And that's exactly what it says here. The fear of the Lord. Now let's talk about the fear of the Lord for a second. Uh, chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord, the beginning of knowledge. And here it says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What is this fear of the Lord? Let me tell you what it is not. The fear of the Lord is not you going through life with some kind of spiritual paranoia going around saying, man, I better watch my step. God's going to get me. I better look. I hope he doesn't see what I'm doing. I've got to look out. God's just out to get me. That's not the fear of the Lord. That's not what it's talking about. That's what some people think. That's not what it means. What is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is to acknowledge the holiness, the majesty, and the authority of God in your life. God is holy. He is king of the universe, and he has authority in your life. That's the fear of the Lord. And it's not a bad thing. It's a healthy thing. It's not some sort of psychosis. It's the way to have the right psychology. By the way, just toss this in. It's not in my notes at all. But you talk about psychology or psychiatry. Uh, those terms come from the Greek word suke, which means soul. So what is psychology or psychiatry? The study of the soul. So here, in verse 18, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What's mean to hate evil? Notice there's a colon after the word evil. So what does that mean? Pride. Arrogancy. What's the first thing the Lord hates? A proud look. Arrogancy, same thing. And the evil way. And the froward mouth uh, may I hate. Some years ago they had a uh, <coughs> They had a TV commercial, and the uh, TV commercial was for a new edition of the Bible, and I don't even at this point remember which one it was, there been so many. And uh, it wasn't the King James, and they had uh, they portrayed, had a man portraying King James, and he was reading, supposedly, the King James Bible, and he came to the word forward, and he says, what exactly is forward? Well, forward is to be perverse, or to be profane, that's what it is. So, what does the Lord say here? It's really not that hard to understand, is my point. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward, or the perverse, or the profane mouth. Do I hate, God says. So he's telling us to hate evil, because he hates these things. And again, part of the evil he hates is pride. Now, Back in chapter 6, we're not going to go back there, but we were given a list of things that the Lord hates and seventh is the abomination. Look at chapter 11, if you will. Proverbs chapter 11. Speaking of abomination, look at verse 1. And so the false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. What is that talking about? It's talking about people cheating other people. False balance. Uh, you come in, let's see. Uh, you come in and you, you're going to give me something. Let's say you brought in gold nuggets. You're not likely to, but let's say you did. And you brought in gold nuggets and you put that on the scale and I'm going to pay you for it, but I kind of tip the scale the other way and have a false balance. So your gold is probably worth $300, but I'm going to tip the scale. Yeah, I got about $125 worth here. Yeah, that's the kind of thing God's talking about. God says he hates that. He hates those who cheat other people. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. What does it mean? God, it, it delights God when we treat other people right. Now look at verse 2. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. We just get a little too proud of ourselves sometimes and feel that we accomplished more than we actually have. I'll be honest with you, I, I can't speak for everybody here, but I haven't accomplished anything except by the grace of God. Yeah. Go to chapter 13, if you would. 
Proverbs chapter 13, and look at verse 10. Proverbs 13, verse 10, only by pride come contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. You know what that's saying? The root of fighting is pride. What do you think about that? I've known, I've seen fights start this way. Not only have I heard somebody say, one guy say another, said, what'd you say about me? I've heard him say, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? What is that? That's pride. That's pride. In other words, the other person that hadn't even said anything to him, didn't do anything to him, said, what are you looking at? The next thing you know, they started fighting. I, honestly, I had a situation, this is many decades ago when I was a young teenager. I was walking down the street one day, a guy walked up to me and says, I don't like your looks, I'm going to change them. <laughs> Just like that. You know, what is that? That's pride. That's pride. Only by pride come a contention. With the well advised is even chapter 14. Chapter 14, and look at verse 3. Chapter 14 and verse 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve you. Did you catch that? In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. Pride leads us to make foolish statements. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. Uh, you can say things out of pride that just, just really are foolish things to say. And remember, he said, uh, the forward mouth. I, I don't want to say too much about this because I don't want to plant bad thoughts in your mind. But if you listen to people who use profanity, if you take what they say literally, so often it doesn't make any sense at all. It literally does not even make sense. And you think, what a stupid thing to say. They usually don't say that in first, but then you'll get more of it. But, but the fact of the matter is, it really doesn't even make sense. Now what is God saying? He says, in the mouth of the foolish is the root of pride. The lips of the wise shall preserve in chapter 16. Chapter 16 and verse 5. Chapter 16, verse 5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Wow. Well, we've seen a couple of things already that were abominations to the Lord. Here's another one. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Really? Well, I thought it was a good thing to have pride. I thought that was a good thing. Yeah, we, we think that. Well, look at what God says. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination of the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. What does that mean, hand join in hand? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it means. It means that the pride of man sets him in enmity with God. And when mankind unites together against God, in their own human pride, they unite together against God. The fact of the matter is, and what happens is, we're just, all we have is united rebellion. Look at verse 18, same chapter, verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fall. That is so true. And many years ago, I used to coach sports. I, I've told you that before. And uh, one day, we had a football game. And uh, we had not played against this other school before, and we were playing at their home field, which was a good thing because we really didn't have one at our school. And uh, so we're there for the game. And I've got my team, and I've got, you know, I'm all dressed up. I've got my briefcase with the plays, and I'm a coach, right? And I'm walking along and walking and looking at the field and looking at the, the players and all that and everything getting lined up out on the field. And I'm walking along like this, and I didn't see, and I just fell in a creepy hole. <laughs> Yeah, there's the coach down in the hole. <laughs> you know what I thought about? I thought about verse 18, the pride goes before destruction, the Holy Spirit before the fall. Say, so, well, you should have watched where you're going. Yeah, I should have. I should have been so proud to be a coach you. <laughs> Man, I know which thing. Did you win that game? No. You <laughs> <laughs> didn't win that game. So the truth of the matter is, what does verse 18 say? So the pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before the fall. You're setting yourself up for a fall when you're consumed with pride. 
even when unified with others in the abomination of the Lord. It leads us to the end. It would be better to be humble and give our hearts and minds to the Lord than to be proud of ourselves. Look at verse 19. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Divide the spoil. What's that? That means you want it. And you're, you're spreading out what you want. But God says it's better for us to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to be dividing the spoil with the proud. Pride leads to an end. Chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. Now, at this point, you begin to think, boy, Proverbs says a lot about pride. You're right. It does. Chapter 21 and verse, let's start at verse 2. It says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pardoned the heart. Isn't that true? Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. We, we, we got it figured out. We know what. Way to go. We got it all figured out. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. He looks at our heart. And in verse 3, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. It is. You know, any sin can be forgiven. But what it's teaching us here, and this is just one of many places where the Bible says this, it's better not to do it in the first place than to seek forgiveness. It helps us a great deal if we think that way. Look at verse 3 again. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is okay. Is that what it says? Is that what your Bible says? It isn't, is it? So you read that wrong. I, I read it wrong on purpose. I want to call your attention to it. The fact of the matter is, it says here, a high look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is what? Sin. I didn't hear you. Sin. Yeah. I really did hear you. But I just wanted to say it. See, it's the pride of man that causes us to do wickedness. It causes us to sin. You know, I've known people to do something. They know it's wrong. They know it's wrong. But they say, well, I can not get away with it. And it seems that they do. And even if they don't get away with it, maybe they pay a penalty, but you know what they say? Well, that wasn't so bad. I can do that again. I was talking to a young man one day, and, and he said uh, he had gotten in some trouble for uh, traffic violations. And I guess I don't remember exactly what, what they were, but apparently pretty bad. And I said, well, what's going to happen? He said, I'll go to court. It cost me a few hundred. Like, that was nothing. Nothing. You know what he's saying? Yeah, a few hundred. That's not so bad. I can deal with that. Just a few hundred. Not even thinking about the fact that he did something wrong. Not even thinking about the fact that he has to face up to what he did wrong. And maybe this time it's a few hundred. Maybe another time it's something far more serious. Pride. That's 21.4, look at 21.24. Proud and hard haunted spirit is his name. He dealeth in proud wrath. Pride causes a man to scorn others. What is scorn? Scorn is mocking others. Scorn lies about others. Scorn tears the other person down with their words. And what does it say here? Proud and haughty scorner is his name. Who dealeth in proud wrath. Is this the bully? Yeah, it's the bully, but it's not just the bully. It's that person who thinks they're better than the other person and tears one down. It's that group of girls that say, Do you see what she wanted? How could she go out in public with that? Yeah, that kind of thing. You know, I'm sure nobody here thinks that way, but if you did, maybe all you ought to do is just check the mirror. Maybe you don't look quite as good as you thought. <laughs> but a man scorns others. He tears them down with their words. Look at chapter 28, Proverbs 28. What almost finished here? 
Proverbs 28. Look at verse 25. Proverbs 28 25. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Now I'm not going to make any fat jokes here, folks, so don't, don't, don't wait for that. But what it's saying here is this is he that is of a proud heart stirs up strife. Pride causes people to riot. Pride causes people to rebel. Pride causes people to start wars. Pride. So what's the answer? What's the solution to all this? Well, look again at verse 25, if you will. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. And the word made fat here just means to be prosperous. When you do what? When you trust the Lord. What is the problem with all this pride? The problem with the pride is trusting yourself, magnifying yourself, building up yourself. That's the pride. Too much thought about self. By the way, let me let me tell you what humility is not. Humility is not going around saying, oh, poor me. Nobody likes me. Everybody picks on me. I gotta feel sorry for me because nobody else feels sorry for me. Did you hear how many me's are in that? Who is that focusing on? Me. It sounds like you know, but really that's a form of pride. It really is. When it's me, 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 I, me, mine, all about me. That's pride. Oh, we think pride is, is the person goes around and says, let me tell you how great I am. I am so great. This is, hasn't happened often, but it's happened to me a couple of times. Uh, and, and I'm not against contractors, believe me. I, I have good friends who are contractors with good people. But I've had a couple of contractors come to me and tell me how good they are and how, how professional they are, what wonderful job you're going to do. And they're a little bit higher priced, but oh, they're worth it because their work is that good. And I've hired them. I'm sorry I did, because their work wasn't that good. As a matter of fact, I said to one fellow, if he, he wanted to do more, I said, no, thank you, I've already seen your work. <laughs> I don't need any more of that. What is that? That's pride. You know what? If you're really that good, your work will speak for itself. You won't have to tell anybody. Now, now that's just a fact. I could say more about that. Athletes and others, not just contractors, other people, musicians, other people, tell you about how great they are. I'm, I'm just the best there's ever been. You know, that's not likely. The best that's ever been. Seven billion people in the world, and you're the best that's ever been. That's one of the people living now. What about all the people who lived throughout history, and you're the best that's ever been? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. That's human pride. The problem with pride, though, is it takes us away from God. It takes our attention off God. It puts our attention on self. <clears throat> One more verse in Proverbs. Chapter 29, if you will. Chapter 29 and verse 23. Chapter 29, verse 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. You know, in the New Testament, it says God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. What's it telling us? It's pride that causes people to lose the love of God. It is pride that causes people to lose the love of their neighbor. It's pride that causes people to look down on their neighbor. It's pride that causes us not to repent of our sins, even when we're aware of our sins. It's pride. We are too proud to humble ourselves, too proud to allow the Holy Spirit to take over in our life, too proud to admit that we've done wrong, too proud to give us, give our hearts over to God. Pride keeps us from God's best. And that's a fact. 
miss out on so much of what God has because we're just too proud. So what should we do? We should come before the Lord and we should say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, for my pride. I'm sorry, Lord, that I talk too much of myself and not enough of others. I'm sorry, Lord, that I talk too much of me and not enough of you. Help me, Lord. Help me to turn my heart over to you and to live my life in testimony so that others can be saved. I've asked people this often throughout the years, and I asked a man this the other day. I said, no, <clears throat> let me ask you something. I said, if, if you were coming to the end of your life, do you know where you'd go? And he said, oh, I'd go to heaven. I said, well, that's, that's good to hear. I said, if you stand before God and God says, why should he let you into heaven? What would you say? By the way, that question is not original to me. Uh, but I, I, if God said to you, why should he let you in heaven? What would you say? And the man didn't hesitate. He spoke and said, well, I, I've lived a good life and I treat other people right. And I treat other people the way I want to be treated. And I, I try to do best for other people. I said, that's what you'd say. I said, yeah. I said, so you would tell God that you've been good. Yeah. I said, all right. How good is good enough? And he got quiet. So well, how good would you have to be? So real good? He said, yeah, real good. I said, better than most people? He said, yeah, better than most people. Okay. He said, you know how good you have to be? Jesus said this. He said, be ye therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, how good is that? That's perfect. It's not just perfect. It's as perfect as God is. That's how good you'd have to be. I said, no. I don't know about you, but I'm not there. He said, no, I don't think I'm there either. I said, so here's, here's what I want you to understand. I said, you've heard the story of how Jesus died on the cross. He said, yeah. I said, you know why Jesus died on the cross? He said, yeah, for our sins. I said, that's right. I said, here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to tell me what it is. I don't need to know what the fact is. It's none of my business. But I want you to think of the worst thing you ever did in your life. Whatever that is. I don't know what that is. But you think of the worst thing you ever did in your life. I said, do you have something in mind? He goes, yeah. I said, all right, now think about this. Whatever that is that you just thought of, that worst thing you ever did in your life, that's what Jesus paid for on the cross. That's it. That's it. And the reason God can forgive you is he looks at you and he doesn't say, well, you know, yeah, he did this bad thing, but he's done so much good. And, and, and all that good makes up for that bad thing. God doesn't say that. And God doesn't look at you and say, well, I know he really did wrong, but he's trying and he's going to do better in the future. We'll let that go. No, nope. never says that either. You know why? There's no justice in that. There's no justice. When the crime is committed, the penalty has to be paid. There's no justice. And God doesn't look at you and I, and he doesn't say, well, okay. You know, it just one time they did wrong. I, I'm, I'm just going to overlook it. What God does do is this. When I come to God and I say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. If I come to God and I say, Lord, forgive me my pride. Here's what he says. That was paid for at the cross. You're forgiven. That, that is God's forgiveness. And that is how we find forgiveness. So what I need to do is take my pride before the Lord. And say, Lord, let me turn my heart over to you and forgive me. And you know what he's going to say? Pay for it at the cross. You're forgiven. Him or I wrote this, and we're going to sing it here just a little bit. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and for contempt on all my Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for blessing us.
Thank you for the time we've had together. Thank you for the time we've had to look at your word and see what it says. Lord, help us to realize that God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Let us, Lord, not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. But let us come before you in repentance. Let us come before you as those needing forgiveness. Let us trust you. Lord, not trusting ourselves or anything that we've done, but trusting you in your grace, trusting you that our sin was paid for at the cross, and that includes our prayer. Our heads are bowed, our eyes closed just a moment. We're going to sing an invitation. As we do, I'm going to leave the platform, stand out the heavens. <coughs> if God's spoken to your heart this morning about the subject we've been discussing, or maybe something else, maybe it's nothing I've said this morning at all, but you know God's talking to you, and you need to do business with him. This is your opportunity. You come while we sing. Don't wait to see what happens. Don't worry about what other people think. You just leave your place and come. Father, bless. Move now in this invitation time. Lord, if there are those who need to be saved, may they come. If there are those who have other matters on their heart, they need prayer, let them come. If those who have decisions to make, may they come. Lord, however you would speak to hearts, let us respond now. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to sing this morning.